Hey, I'm Kyle and this is another teaching moment. Today we're here with Ashley and Ben and we are going to be covering the basics of soldering. To get started, we are going to power up our stations. Today we're using the FX888D from Hako, and now we're going to cover safety tips. First things first, get your safety glasses on, and um, there are some fumes while soldering, so we are using a fume extractor. I do recommend having adequate ventilation and or a fume extractor. Um, and Soldering irons do get hot, so it's important to be mindful of that and always keep it properly held in your station. Some people prefer using a leaded solder because it does have a lower melting point and it is easier to use in some instances than a lead-free solder. Today we are using a leaded solder um, and there are some health concerns with that because it does contain lead. So it is important to always wash your hands after you're done soldering. We set our soldering stations to 750 degrees, which is a good temperature for doing basic circuit soldering like we will be doing today. The next thing we want to do is tin our tips to make sure they are clean. A uh, clean tip is very important when soldering, so you can either clean it on a wet sponge or brass shavings like are included with these kits. And then after cleaning off the oxidation, apply solder directly to the tip to prevent further oxidation in the future. So when you begin soldering in the circuit, it's important to select the correct component. As you can see, all of the components here are labeled and have different symbols and values, as do all of the components included with the kit. It's important that the correct component is selected and placed in the right position. Next, we want to talk about the sequence of the components that go into the board. I like to start off with the least sensitive to most sensitive components. So basically, that's normally resistors, connectors, capacitors, semiconductors like diodes, LEDs, ICs, and other components. Another thing to consider when placing components is it's often easier to place smaller components um, height-wise than larger components because if you're working on a bench top, a large component is going to make your board you know, at a weird angle. So that's when a board vise may come in handy to place your board inside so the height of the components doesn't affect you. The first component we're going to place today is a resistor. So I think we'll start off with this 10K that's near the edge of the board. You can download a color guide such as this on the DigiKey website. There is also a, an interactive resistor calculator. So for a 10K, the color code is going to be brown, black, orange. So components such as diodes, LEDs, and capacitors along with ICs all have a specific orientation that needs to be met when they are placed into a circuit board. For instance, most diodes will have a stripe on them that needs to be matched up with an indication on the board. So that one is shown here. Electrolytic capacitors will typically have a shorter lead on the negative end, and they will also typically have a stripe um, that indicates the negative lead as well. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's get started. All right, so let's put our first component in the board. That's going to be this 10K resistor that we found earlier. Then I like to bend the leads out a little bit to hold the component in place. Now we get our soldering iron and some solder. Bring in the iron on the side of the joint and the solder from the opposite side. You want to heat the pad and the lead evenly, otherwise you'll end up with a cold joint. As it heats up from the iron, bring in the solder until it looks like that. Then just do the same for the other lead. Let's check out this cold solder joint like this one on the corner. The solder is on the lead, but not on the pad very well. So I will demonstrate how to fix that now. We just heat up the joint properly, both the pad and the lead, and then add some solder in. If there's too much solder on the joint, we would use a product called solder wick. It's a braided copper that you would place on the joint, cover it like that, heat it up, 
and the solder will be pulled out of the joint. You can place multiple components in the board and solder them all at once like this. When you finish, you should snip the extra length of the leads off with a flush cut tool. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses since these tend to go flying. It also helps if you hold them as you snip. And here's the final soldering kit. Now with these skills you can make all your soldering dreams come true. You can make your temporary circuits permanent. And as with anything, soldering does take some practice. These kits are a great way to practice. We have a large selection of kits on digikey.com. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.